Hello everybody, it's Alex and Tuna. This is part two for Mars Attacks. And today I'm gonna create this ray gun. This is gonna be probably a couple extra parts or more videos after this. But this is the final ray gun of what I end up with. And to start with, I gather references for the ray gun using pure ref to just kind of organize what I found online. And there's a lot of variations to the ray gun. I found the movie version, um, some comic book versions, but I kind of stuck with this one that you see in the bottom left of the image or in pure ref. And to start out, I start with a sphere because that's pretty much where the base of the ray gun starts. And everything you see in this model is pretty much basic perimeters. Um, nothing's sculpted, nothing's really fully detailed. The only part that I got really kind of um, a little more in detail was the handle. And even that, I kind of went back to a basic um, model. I kind of Z-remeshed it. But you'll see later on in the videos if you stick around to see how I made that. The next primitive I use is a cylinder, and this is pretty basic uh, geometry again. I'm, I'm not doing anything complicated, I'm just grabbing stuff and scaling it and going back and forth uh, to create the parts that I need. And I, I pretty much go to the scope, or whatever that is, I guess the a fuel thing for the ray gun. Most of the time when I model something I'll use like a, a reference and put it in the background and use that to uh, get an idea of scale for this model I didn't really do that I just kind of kept it real uh, free flow kind of just I didn't want to be I wanted, I wanted to be more creative in it and just kind of create something on the fly instead of trying to figure out if it was too exact or the right one this is more a little more creative freedom and this te technique right here, if you see, I'm using, um, let me see what it's called. It was uh, um, the insert on the edge, and it's some mul multiple edge loops. And I put it on interactive elevation. And that creates that rounded off edge for your model. I found that technique on another video that somebody had made another ray gun, and I was actually looking for the process of creating this in ZBrush and I, I kept running into dead ends and then I saw this video and I was like wow that's cool and that's it it was exactly what I needed to to it was one of the toolboxes I guess you know a technique in your toolbox for ZBrush coming from 3d studio max uh, I know how to do it in max but in ZBrush I'm still learning a, a workflow and a process using hard surface and pretty much basic primitive or poly modeling and I guess most people are on the same boat given that ZBrush didn't have all these features to start with it was mainly for sculpting and and uh, characters and stuff like that but as the program grows you start getting more tools and then you're learning new techniques to how uh, they work and how they are used right here uh, I didn't I actually have to scale this back later on I know in a later video to get the the shoulder rest a little more to scale when I add him to the character um, to pose him I realized that I made it a little too big and I do have to scale it if you look at the reference it's, it's a little tiny shoulder rest and it's barely I don't know it's just it's silly it's funny how small it is but it's it, at the time when I built this it was it's where it's at right now but I, I adjust it later on here's another primitive um, another cylinder and you can see that I I go from there and do um, some adjustments when you create it there is a um, how do you say it I do a close holes and there's a way to close the hole without um, losing that 
if you see the end right there it's not it's not a how you usually get a cylinder but if you do a close let me see what it's called I'm pulling up ZBrush I think it's convex hole it's one or the other or concave hole but it'll make the end of it a little bit more what you're used to I think it's a convex but you'll see right here I do it real quick this is sped up so it's kind of hard to tell what I did but I delete that mesh and I go there you go convex and I close it this way well oh, didn't delete it do it again one more time there you go and you can see right here that the end of it's a little more easier to work with instead of the other um, way it was looking it's easier to extrude when it's every, everything's on a on a clean edge loop I kind of jump around I've always done this with modeling I guess I kind of get the back and forth let's jump from one spot to another just trying to get it fleshed out and get a get the base mesh built as quickly as I can and I guess it also kind of helps keeping the, the the fire going don't try to get burned out on just one object it kind of keeps it the momentum going forward right here I'm not doing anything crazy all I'm doing just adding edge loops and insetting extruding in extruding out and adding a little more interest and detail I don't really zoom in on the the reference but you can tell that I'm pretty much just free-flowing with this model I wanted to have fun with it I don't want to be too too constrained it was a fun it was a fun model I actually had a lot of fun playing with different techniques and different ideas of how to model things in here so I'm looking at the other parts of the gun and the ray gun looks so tiny and I think I might mine a little bit more a little bigger than what the references show and when, when I put it with the character you'll see that it's a little bit bigger because I didn't want it to get lost whenever I try to render it in the final when I make a scene right now I'm trying to pose them but that's later on in the videos I jump around trying to find out where the next geometry I want to grab or do um, kind of scaling things in and out trying to get the proportions right trying to get it the the foundation of your model correct right here I'm trying to get the, um, the details in the shoulder I think I had a little trouble with it. Um, I ended up doing bevel on polygroups. That worked for a little bit, and then I, I realized that I um, kind of destroyed the mesh to to add other details. And you'll see here, I'll probably do it. Um, when I did that, it kind of took something away, and so I had to go back. I rebuild it later on, or maybe in the in this video but when I beveled the polygroups it added an extra edge I didn't want and made things a little more tricky but I think for here I, I kind of leave it and I did make it pretty you can see how far it's sticking out the shoulder harness the shoulder rest Right here, I'm actually just trying to get that um, riveted kind of centerpiece. And this is this is always fun. I, I love that you can insert um, edge loops, or and then it'll vary it in a, like a checker pattern going down. And then it makes it easier for just extruding out every other polygon or edge loop on there. Right here, nothing fancy. All I'm doing is just uh, insert an edge, edge loop, and then extruding and dynamic subdivision. And if I need a little more crease, I'm going to add an extra um, edge loop in there to kind of crease it out. 
Uh, sometimes I'll use the um, crease edges um, poly groups, but it depends. It, I guess it depends on where I'm at and what I want to do on it. And sometimes it's just easier to add an extra loop and not have to worry about everything else. Because if I'm going to export it to another program, it'll make a difference if I add smoothing or I don't apply it, um, the smoothing to it. I think right here I'm just trying to get scale, trying to look at it. A lot of it's just kind of eyeballing it, like what connects to what, where, what goes where, where the pieces go, and pushing and pulling. A lot of cylinders. This model is pretty much mostly cylinders and a sphere. And if you think of it that way, it's not so bad. It if you if you're just starting and modeling, this is this is very basic and this is usually a fun thing to model a ray gun polygroups um, group by normals I saw that from another video and that was actually a cool tip so I made a little button on a little pop-up window to group by normals and then do the crease edges it actually helps getting the workflow a little bit quicker and then just kind of tighten it up make it a little more smooth on the edges Right here, you can see I needed a extra loops, but I go ahead and add the segments, I believe. I'm still trying to get the scale right when looking at the references, you know, just pushing and pulling. As I keep working with the model, I realize that some of it, the proportions are a little off, and so I start pulling them back in a little bit more and that's the fun thing about 3d is that if you mess up you can fix it you can change it you can adjust it and there's really no you know no mistakes because you could always start over if you really have to unless you're too deep in the woods but even then there's always a way to get back back to where you started there's an undo history and all all that inside of each model that helps a lot I'm looking at the references, just kind of zooming in and out. It looks like I'm about to add some segments here, but trying to get that adjusted a little bit better to where I can get even segments on the model. And boom. This is such a cool feature that it, it does every other poly group, and then you can just do this stuff like this easy. Um, You'd rarely see something like this in another program to where you can get quick results and get something um, just as quick. Usually in Max, I'd have to either do a technique to check every other uh, every other one, then edge loop it, but then you pretty much come down to selecting each one. And here, you just do all polygroups. So much, so much easier. As you can see, we started with a, a sphere and we start adding just slow, more detail, more detail, and just going from there. Um, I'm adding, a, let's see what I'm adding. I'm trying to add like a, the little hinge on the middle. And I, I add detail, just add a little more interest, make it a little more not so boring I know the references show it pretty flat but for me I was just wanting a little more detail so far it's just pushing pulling extrude and more cylinders getting the shape of the look just lining things up. Most of the time, if I was in a different program, I would snap to uh, center and this and that. But for this, I didn't feel like it was really necessary. It was. This is more of a, a fun piece. 
Now this part that I extrude on the bottom, I don't know if I remove it or I deleted it, but I remember having to do it more than once. I don't know if I just didn't like what I did and, and started over and figured I'd do it a different way. But what I ended up in the final, maybe it's this one, I don't know. I do remember having to do it twice. Maybe I didn't get it and just carried on or something. You know, sometimes you'll run into roadblocks and then you just say, I'll come back to that later. Get the creative juices flowing. Just So now I'm just kind of adding a little more um, definition to things. Scaling, scaling on the X, scaling on the Y. And right here, this little piece on the side, if you remember the little alien, um, He's got a earpiece that looks very similar to the reference. And for me, if you're short on time, why not use that again? So that's what I do here. I go look for the earpiece. And there it is. Real quick, let's see if I grab it. There it is. And I believe I append it to this model and that's what's cool is that you can append anything in, inside of another um, model looking at it I uh, grabbed the wrong piece I think so I go I gotta go back I don't know what I, how I selected the wrong one but I did and usually what you do if, if you're not familiar with this just go to the model if it's a Z tool and have that the selected one in your subtool drop down and then append and that'll be the tool that'll be imported and that works out pretty good and since I've already created this there's no reason for me to go and try to make another detail that's similar I just reuse what you got sometimes and then that usually helps saves time saves just keeps your creative flow going and you're not really missing a beat I try to make this uh, integrated with that part right there so I just add a little more edge loops and stuff like that I don't want to lose that that flow so this worked and I'll scale it and try to make it a little more uh, varied that way it's not too exact to the the earpiece that is there on the alien but I feel like this this piece worked really well. Some edge loops to make it look like it's a little little more integrated. To make it look like it's a new piece, but not just enough to cheat it. Who's gonna zoom in? Nobody's gonna look at it like, oh my god, he didn't remodel that from scratch. Nobody cares. I, I hope not. you can see right here I'm just trying to get a little more definition um, I th think the creases weren't working or something so I do a uh, group by normals and I go from there and mirror um, mirror weld on the X and that helped and then you mirror it to the other side and you're done that's the piece knocked out The handle, this is probably the more complicated part to the model that I had trouble with. Um, not gonna lie, I was, I don't know why. It, it I guess I, I kind of over, made it a little more complicated than it should have been. And that happens, you know. Initialize it to make it into a cube. And there you go, little cube right there. I'm trying to get the scale I'm trying to get that and I guess what I was trying to factor in is that how big is the aliens hand how big how many fingers did he have I think I go back and say like does it got four fingers he has four fingers and a thumb but box modeling is pretty much what this ended up being and then I kind of try to use uh, booleans on it to cut in this little uh, detail that 
that goes onto the side of it. But for the most of it, it it's pretty much just a box and with segments. Pushing and pulling, cutting in. I'm trying to find a, the the default setting. I wish it was a maybe there is. Um, not so much to initialize ZBrush, but to reset. Well, I guess there is a button. Never mind. It's inside of the the brush window or the to reset your brushes. But at the time, I didn't I didn't think about that. Right here, I'm trying to count how many segments I want. If I want one, two, three, or four, or what I want to grab, what I want to push and pull, and looking at the references, looking at what I do. I kind of go back and forth with this model. A little more challenging. Um, it's not a sphere. <laughs> it's a box. But uh, I wanted to give it a little more... Um, A little more detail but in the end he's gonna be holding it so it really didn't matter it's for me sometimes I, I just want to model it even if it's not seen I don't know why I do that and then that'll that'll make all the difference in the world I'll sleep better knowing that I did it <laughs> but for this it on this uh, video I don't think I finished this the handle piece is detailed but for placement that's where it's where it ends up right now and I'll, I'll refine it some more later on I kind of tweak it and push and pull try to make a little bit more um, to the reference pushing and pulling using deformers I love those deformers they're so fun to use um, old versions of ZBrush didn't have that and just having that feature in here is just uh, just makes things so much easier crease uh, by polygroups or bevel by polygroups is what I try to do here but I believe that it destroys the mesh and so it's not really what I wanted but I think I keep it. You can see the edges are, are being destroyed. And you can see it here, what, what that did. And I'm trying to like define the edges, even though I want to keep that crease by, or um, bevel polygroups. And it kind of worked. It kind of worked for what I needed right there. I was going to do a boolean on each little tr uh, finger. But I think I, I can't remember if I do go back to that method and try to boolean it back in. But I do zero mesh this model because it just it just needed to be refined. I didn't want to deal with uh, taking out subdivisions and remodeling parts of it or bridging gaps. For me, I think I felt like I, I spent too much time on this part and I just needed to carry on. But at the end of the day, I was just trying to get something to place it in there. But this is almost the end of this part two for this Mars attack model and the alien and the ray gun. Um, I should post up another video pretty soon. I, I already have them made. I just got to um, put some audio over them. Hope this helps. I hope that you know you learned a little bit, or maybe picked up a technique, or or not. Who knows? Um, you might have already known some of the techniques. And a lot of this is very basic modeling, cylinders, spheres. And if you're a beginner, this is probably perfect. This is probably something that you um, enjoy might enjoy, just because it's not overly complicated and it's just using basic shapes and primitives to create I guess I got 
back in the thing and I actually just start cutting it and this is this is like about where I start sculpting on the handle but that'll conclude this ver this video and uh, thank you for watching I hope I hope it was informative.